Hello, and welcome to my talk. My name is Stanley Cantrell, and I'm excited to present our paper entitled High Chart Sonification Studio, an online, open source, extensible, and accessible data sonification tool. This work was performed in collaboration with Dr. Bruce Walker, Oystein Mosang, and the accessibility team at HiSoft AS. In order to better orient this work, we must travel back in time to the year 2003, when the Sonification Sandbox was first presented to the ICAD community. Motivated by the need for a multi-platform, multi-purpose toolkit for sonifying data, Walker and Catherine developed the Sonification Sandbox, a cross-platform Java application that allowed users to map data to multiple auditory parameters and add context using a graphical user interface or GUI. The software allowed users to independently map several data sets to timbre, pitch, volume, and pan, with full control over the default minimum, maximum, and polarity for each attribute. Typical applications for the Sonification Sandbox included the generation of auditory displays for the blind, science and mathematics education, data exploration, and experimenting with the effectiveness of various sonification techniques and parameters. In 2007, the Sonification Sandbox underwent a significant upgrade. Presented by Davison and Walker, the Sandbox was overhauled in order to address many of the previous shortcomings, provide new features, and enable a more robust and extensible platform. But in particular, the upgraded Sonification Sandbox offered a data model that reflected the current academic understanding of auditory graphs components. But as technology and software standards evolved, so did the Sonification Sandbox. The evolution of the internet, especially as it relates to the capabilities of web-based audio and persistent applications, has meant that much of what was previously done in native applications or in tools such as MATLAB or SuperCollider could now be done in an application written to run in a web browser. This inspired the development of the web-based sonification sandbox, which was presented in 2017 by Condec et al. The web sonification sandbox was designed with four main functional goals in mind to maximize accessibility, maintain a high ceiling, maximize portability, and maximize utility. And after 18 years of experience gained through research and development of the Sonification Sandbox, in combination with significant contributions by our colleagues within and outside the ICAD community, today we are excited to introduce the High Chart Sonification Studio. The High Chart Sonification Studio, or HSS, is the culmination of a multi-year collaboration between HiSoft, the makers of high charts, and the Georgia Tech Sonification Lab to develop an accessible online spreadsheet and multimodal graphing platform for the auditory display assistive technology in STEM education community. Fundamentally, the HSS is a systematic reimplementation of the Sonification Sandbox, benefiting from the integration of HiSoft's industry-leading web-based high charts technology with the Georgia Tech Sonification Lab's expertise in sonification and interactive auditory displays. It was important to follow a stakeholder-based design process and to involve sonification and visualization experts, usability and accessibility experts, and especially individuals who wear more than one of these hats. The intention is for this tool to be a free resource that can be leveraged and extended by the community while also being supported by a company whose business is making widely available data tools and is committed to adding sonification to those tools. Through this co-design process, we sought to validate the utility and usability of the HSS through the inclusion of blind users, sighted users, and expert accessibility evaluators in the development process. This year-long co-design study was conducted in three phases with multiple check-in points with HiSoft included throughout the process. Phase one of this co-design study was performed using the HSS version 0.0.4. This study included 13 participants and one expert accessibility evaluator. Study participants were instructed to complete 33 benchmarking tasks, which were broadly categorized as either interaction tasks or manipulation tasks. The expert evaluator was instructed to critically interrogate the HSS. As such, they did not have to follow the benchmarking tasks, but were encouraged to test the limits of the software to identify pain points. 29 of the 33 tasks received perfect ratings on the pure usability scale for the cited group, which indicated high levels of usability among this group. 
13 of the 33 tasks receive perfect ratings on the pure usability scale, indicating usability and accessibility issues for individuals who identified as blind or visually impaired. To better contextualize these usability issues, we thematically analyzed all issues against Nielsen's 10 UX heuristics to understand how we could continue to improve the HSS system. On the left, you'll see our expert accessibility evaluator, AE1, critically interrogating the interface. And on the right, you'll see one of our participants as she completes the benchmarking tasks using JAWS on a Windows 10 machine. Given our phase one findings and insights, the team at HiSoft was able to further improve upon the HSS and provide us with version 0.0.9. .0 phase two included another critical usability and accessibility assessment from four expert accessibility evaluators. On these next two slides, you'll see screen grabs from Zoom calls with some of our accessibility experts. Considering the significant updates to the HSS system, the experts were able to more exhaustively explore and evaluate the HSS interface. Again, we were able to identify usability and accessibility issues based on Nielsen's UX heuristics. A few examples included violations of Heuristic 1, visibility of system status. Based on our feedback, we concluded that the timeout delay on all UI elements, including spin boxes and combo boxes, should be consistent across the interface. These are expectations that users have regarding the usability of interfaces, and this system status ought to be consistent across the HSS interface. Another example that we identified was the inclusion of global hotkeys, or shortcuts for core features such as play, pause, volume up and down, and more. Participants often refer to YouTube as a canonical ground truth for a media interface with global media hotkeys. Phase three, the final phase of this study, was a much more informal usability and accessibility evaluation. In this phase, key stakeholders of the HSS were able to connect and discuss issues that were deemed vital to the success of the HSS system. In particular, much of the user feedback was regarding the accessibility of the data table. To this end, the team concluded that we ought to forego the conventional ARIA grid and develop a custom in-house platform comparable to what is found on systems such as Google Sheets. Additionally, to ensure the continued adoption and expansion of the HSS system, evaluators recommended the creation of a community forum where users could discuss issues amongst each other, provide feedback, and pose features that they'd hope to see implemented in the future. This phase provided key insights into the strategic implementation of the HSS system and how it could reach the broadest user base possible. In this talk, we've discussed the genesis of the Sonification Sandbox, its development over the last 18 plus years, and design and evaluation of the all new High Chart Sonification Studio in collaboration with HiSoft, the makers of High Charts. Throughout this study, we were able to identify and address several critical usability and accessibility issues with the goal of presenting the most useful and usable interface possible. We encourage our viewers to read our paper for a much more comprehensive review of our work. The high chart sonification sandbox is now live and we are constantly refining the system based on user feedback. We are excited to announce that this software and look forward to seeing it serve the community for science, art, and STEM education. Lastly, we would like to acknowledge the individuals who helped us along the way. To the ICAT community, thank you for providing us the opportunity to conduct and discuss this research. To the members of the Sonification Lab for providing support and advice at every step of the way. To our participants and evaluators for their time, energy, and efforts and to the amazing team at HiSoft for their dedication to the development of a system backed by data from target users. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you, Stanley, uh, and the High Charts team for this stimulating presentation. I think a lot of people uh, have this the sentiment, which is that it's great to see, you know, the unupdated sandbox is a great sort of it's a really mature next step i mean i uh, having been in sonification for a while like i'm just amazed at how far this has gone is now you know like an accessible potentially public tool yeah absolutely it's been and i'm i'm getting you can hear me right am i still muted yes or? 
Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, especially, you know, from when uh, I think, you know, some of my uh, colleagues were back in the lab, um, sort of developing it, and to see it now, like in the hands of like a company who's really interested in developing it out um, further. Um, it's really exciting to see. So I'm looking forward to the, the next few iterations, because things are absolutely still underway. So while I wait for um, any questions in the Q&A or, uh, or in the chat, um, I'll just ask if you can say a little bit more about um, the, uh, the data accessibility issue, the, um, uh, the creating the in-house spreadsheet, sort of like Google Sheets, like what, uh, what would that improve in terms of public access? So at the time, um, we were trying to understand what would be the best route as far as implementing a accessible data grid. Um, there were a couple of different um, sort of options that we had. There was the ability to either take something that was commercially available and see how we could customize that or develop something in in-house. At the time of the study, we were actually just try trying to see, we had to put something in there for a proof of concept. But we realized mm -hmm. yeah. that this wouldn't be usable for individuals with visual impairments. We understood that for our sighted participants, they would be able to overcome these challenges. But we knew that at a certain point, we had to sort of figure out a way to develop an in-house uh, model for doing so. At the time, a lot of people sort of re would revert back to saying like, hey, this isn't how Excel works. This isn't how Google Sheets works. And quite frankly, if they if they differ from that, then we need to do something on our end to make sure that things sort of co are consistent with the different structures that currently exist and they at least follow that convention. So fortunately, the team at HiSoft was very receptive to this feedback because um, our, our accessibility evaluators uh, did not hold their tongues whatsoever. And they let us know, um, you know, this wouldn't fly. This would not fly as its current state. So we did what we could, you know, collaborating with them and making sure that the engineering team understood how important it was for this for this data grid to even be accessible. Because if that's not accessible, this tool is all for not. To be quite quite honest with you. So, you know, there were just issues as far as like navigating between cells and having to relearn shortcut keys. For example, to tab mm -hmm. is it shift tab or is it regular tab, and what is that exactly going to do? And that's differing from just being able to use your normal arrow keys. So just different conventions that were broken. Um, we had to refine a bit, and the things are currently still under construction. Um, but we we certainly believe that in the next couple of iterations, everything will be ironed out. Yeah, that's excellent. I do have more questions about, um, you know, bringing in your own data in various formats and because if you're dealing with a really large data set, right, I mean, having to input it manually into a, into a different system would be hard, but um, I'll, I'll ask you maybe in the Q&A room one, but Hans Lindentorp has a question, which I also have, which is about uh, the approach to sound generation. Is it a fixed set, set of synthesizers or is it an open system for users to plug in their own sound that they might want to use? So everything is in-house and we use the web audio API. So um, with regards to how the engineering team implemented, we believe that everything is should currently exist within, we, we've been using the Chrome browser. So everything is in-house. I'm not sure if that is... Um, modifiable it may be potentially in the future because it is open source and you could probably go through and um modify it yourself and that's absolutely what we want our want to encourage within the community but as for right now everything is built upon the web audio api mm -hmm. it's yeah, everything sound wise i'm sorry sound wise yeah um and are you able to bring in your own sound on sound sample not right now not right now but in but the future Yes, yeah, so it is currently open source and it's available via GitHub. So um, maybe by the end of the week, somebody can go in and <laughs> mock that up. Um, but that, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that whether, you know, you could be a sound engineer in a whole another country or you could be somebody who is visually impaired who wants to develop sounds your own way, you should be able to do that with this tool. So that's what we certainly want to encourage within the community. Yeah, no, I think, you know, one of the one of the things about it is just to make it accessible to non technical people, right? Not everybody can mm -hmm. go on GitHub and, you know, <laughs> quickly, quickly put something together, but it would be great to uh, Stephen, um, as Stephen, Stephen mentioned in the chat to bring this into the data dashboards of more and more and more people so that it becomes like another standard, just like visualize simple visualizations are so standard and in data analysis for everybody, like so should sonification. Agreed, agreed, absolutely. 